Viva la quince brigada, rumba, rumba, rumba la. Viva la quince brigada, rumba, rumba, rumba la. Que sea cubierta de gloria. Ay, Manuela, ay, Manuela. Que sea cubierta de gloria. Ay, Manuela, ay, Manuela. Me siento contra los muros, rumba, rumba, rumba la. Luchamos contra los moros, rumba, 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 la. Mercenarios y fascistas, ay Manuela, ay Manuela. Mercenarios y fascistas, ay Manuela, ay Manuela. In the spring of 1936, there was a lot of bad news. Hitler occupies the Rhineland. Mussolini annexes Ethiopia. Japan takes Shanghai province. Mosley's black shirts march in England. O'Duffy's blue shirts in Ireland. And silver shirts, along with the Bund and the Klan, march in the USA. Fascism seems unstoppable. What did you hear on the radio in the United States in the early 1930s? Father Charles E. Coughlin. The fighting priest was voted the most useful citizen of 1933. Each week, he spoke to 30 million people. Ladies and gentlemen, the system of international finance, which has crucified the world to the cross of depression, was evolved by Jews for the holding the people of the world under control. What did you read in the newspapers? 14 fell in war at Ohio factory. Strike breakers fire on pickets at Black and Decker plant in Kent, New York Times, June 16, 1936. Japan Nazi Accord. Hitler greets new Tokyo envoy with unusual friendliness. San Francisco Examiner. Ex-President Herbert Hoover excoriates New Deal as fascism, demanding a holy crusade for freedom. New York Times, 6-11-36. There was a bright spot. Elections in Spain brought to power the Popular Front coalition of the parties of the left and center. Spain could continue moving from the 18th century to the 20th, and with the vote, a blow against fascism felt worldwide had been struck. A new republic instituting universal health care, education, land reform, employment, women's rights, and religious freedom. Just because he's human, he doesn't like a pistol to his head. He wants no servants under him and no boss over his head. So left, two, three, so left, two, three. Work that we must do. March on in the workers' united front. Las habladurías le bastan ya porque estas nada de tal. Pues un, dos, tres, pues un, dos, tres, compañero en tu lugar. Porque eres de pueblo, afiliate ya en el frente.
The forces of Spanish reaction, the military church, the aristocracy and landowning class would not let the electoral victory of the Popular Front stand. On July 17, 1936, a military rebellion began. To the general's surprise, the revolt was defeated in almost all of the big cities and much of the countryside by the efforts of a poorly armed but defiant populace. On the 18th of July, in the patio of a convent, the people of Madrid formed the 5th Regiment. Four battalions defend Madrid. They are the best of Spain, the reddest flower of the people. Son los cuatro batallones que Madrid están defendiendo. Se va lo mejor de España, la flor más roja del pueblo. On the verge of defeat, Franco called for help, and Hitler and Mussolini responded with arms, men, and planes. General Mola's army headed south as Franco's Spanish Foreign Legion and Moroccan troops, transported to Spain by German planes, moved north from Andalusia. They met at the fortress town of Badajoz on the Portuguese border. Journalist J. Allen, Chicago Tribune, Elvas, Portugal. August 25th, 1936. This is the most painful story it's ever been my lot to handle. I write it at four o'clock in the morning, sick at heart in the body, in the stinking patio of Pension Central. I've come from Badajoz, several miles away in Spain. I've been up on the roof to look back. There was a fire. There are burning bodies. 4,000 men and women have died at Badajoz since General Francisco Franco's rebel foreign legionnaires climbed over the bodies of their own dead through its many times blood-drenched walls. I tried to sleep. You can't sleep on a soil lumpy bed in a room at the temperature of a Turkish bath with memories of what you've seen tormenting you with the smell of blood in your very hair, and with a woman sobbing in the room next door. We saw the dust cloud grow large in the distance, shut the strong gates and we took to the wall. Rifles can't hold off a motorized column. Rifles are useless when bombs start to fall. But we made them pay dearly for each street and plaza. For more than a day, we fought hand to hand till the last of our comrades were caught in the churchyard. 
there they held out to the very last man in the street by the market they searched all the houses dragged out the men and they killed them with knives the fine spanish captain gave them permission loot the men's houses and use the men's wine and they searched through the city for young ones and workers searched us for weapons or trade union cars they'd rip off the blouses to look at the shoulder for a bruise that is made when a rifle kicks home then they herded us down to the plaza de toros mounted machine guns high up in the stands the moors and the legion shot hundreds and hundreds the blood could no longer soak into the sand and the blood from the bodies of more than 2,000 made large crimson puddles on blood-soaked red Franco's rebel army headed east, rolling through town after town. Resistance was crushed, and supporters of the Republic were executed. In two months, the drive reached Madrid. The Republican government fled to Valencia. The people of a popular front, Madrid, enraged by the terror bombings of working class districts and inspired by Dolores Ibaruri, La Passionaria, 24 hours of exhortation on the radio met the enemy at the gates of the city. An ill-armed and untrained people's militia versus Franco's trained forces and the bombs of Hitler's Luftwaffe. The eyes of the world were on Madrid. Franco proclaimed that the next day he would celebrate mass at the cathedral in Madrid. When a column of men, uniformed and armed, marched in formation through the city at dawn, some people thought that Franco had broken through. It was the Tailman Battalion, German anti-fascists, volunteers led by Hans Beimler, who escaped from a concentration camp and helped organize the newly formed international brigades. From eyewitness Pablo Neruda, one morning in a cold month, a dying month, spattered with mud and smoke, when mercenary jackals could be heard howling with rifles and bloody teeth, when we now thought the world was filled only with devouring monsters and furies. Then, breaking through the frost of a cold Madrid month, through the mist of dawn, I saw, with these eyes I have, with this heart that sees, I saw the bright and spirited and commanding combatants of the lean, tough, mature, ardent, and steadfast brigade arrive. Onions, Himmel, Breite, Seine, Sterne, Uwe, Unsere, Schutzen, Graben, Aus, Und Morgen, Gruß, Schon aus der Ferne, Bald geht es zum neuen Kampf hinaus. Die Heimat ist weit, Und wir sind bereit, Wir kämpfen und siegen für dich, Spread their brilliant starlight High above our trenches in the plain From the distance morning comes to greet us Calling us to battle once again We're far from our lands Yet ready we stand We're fighting Yield a foot to Franco's fascists, even though the bullets fall like sleet. With us stand those fearless men, our comrades for us, 
there can be no retreat. The Germans were joined by French, Polish, and Italian anti-fascists. Eventually, there were volunteers from 52 countries. They brought their songs with them and they shared them. One song was sung in every language of the international brigades. Volunteers from Ireland went to both sides of the Spanish conflict. O'Duffy in his blue shirts with the fascists, Frank Ryan in the Connolly column with the Lincoln Battalion. Ten years before I saw the light of morning, a comradeship of heroes was laid. From every corner of the world they came. 15th International Brigade They came to stand beside the Spanish people To try and stem the rising fascist tide Franco's allies were the powerful and wealthy Frank Ryan's men came from the other side And even the olives were bleeding as the battle for Madrid it thundered on Truth and love against the force of evil Brotherhood against the fascist clan Viva la quince brigada No pass along the bridge made them fight Adelante is the cry around the hill Remember them tonight Many Irishmen they heard the call of Franco Joined Hitler and Mussolini too Propaganda from the pulpit and newspapers Helped O'Duffy to recruit his crew Then the word came from a new support the Nazis the men of cloth have failed again When the bishops fled the blue shirts in Dunleary As they sailed beneath the swastika to Spain Viva la quince brigada No passer on the pledge made them fight All remember them This song is a tribute to Frank Ryan Kit Conway and Dinny Cody too Peter Daly, Charlie Reagan and Hugh Bonner Though many died, I can but name a few Viva la quinta brigada no pasa 
came to New York from the Communist International in Moscow for volunteers, and hundreds and hundreds responded from across the U.S. Communists, socialists, activists, labor people, artists, people in exile from their fascist governments, and so on. Most people supported the Spanish Republic, including Eleanor Roosevelt, but reactionary forces, including industrialists, the Catholic Church, and right-wing nationalists actively supported the fascists. The American government forbade its citizens from going to Spain, and passports were stamped not valid for travel in Spain. The other day, a friend of mine applied for a passport. You are not going to Spain, are you? Asked the passport office clerk. Heavens, no. I'm going to Switzerland to study cheese. Why do you ask? This passport is not valid for travel in Spain. The use of this passport for that purpose will constitute a violation of Section 221 of Title 22 of the United States Code, which makes it unlawful to travel to Spain. These are troubling times. I don't know what to think. No one who comes in here is going to Spain. Some of them are going to Paris to study art. Some of them intend to photograph the cathedrals. I even had one man who said he was going abroad to study spots on the moon. But somehow, they all seem to end up in Spain in the Loyalist trenches. Hmm. All this suggests to me that the tide of traffic towards Spain must be exceedingly great. It is the policy of America to encourage its citizens to take a neutral stance towards foreign conflicts. Mm, do you mean that the person should be indifferent to which side wins or loses? That seems to be the idea. For a man to be indifferent about a vital issue, the outcome of which will affect the whole world and everyone living, he would, of course, have to be an absolute ass. Yes, I believe that would be necessary. The American Volunteers' first action was in February 1937, defending Madrid in the Harama Valley. Casualties were staggering. There's a valley in Spain called Harama. It's a place that we all know so well. Where we all learn the true cost of freedom And so many of our brave comrades We are proud of the Lincoln Battalion And the fight for Madrid that it made There they fought like true sons of the people as part of the 15th Brigade. There's a valley in Spain called Verama. It's a place that we all know so well, where we all learn the true cost of freedom. And so many of our brave comrades fell. Dave Smith, wounded in the Battle of Harama. Spain changed my whole life. I saw a country struggling, ordinary people, peasants, poor people. They couldn't even read or write. But when these young people came up to the front, we became an integrated army, the people struggling against the oppressing group of fascists. It left an indelible impression on my mind. So when I got back, I decided that I was going to be committed to furthering the cause of the people, whatever I did. Spain was the most important thing I did in my life next to getting married. Hilda Roberts, nurse, 
Medical Bureau. I met wonderful, hardworking people. Most of them were so poor they had never had medical care before. They didn't know what a doctor was. If you were not rich, you never saw a doctor or a nurse. I treated one girl with a shrapnel wound and she was so thankful. She never dreamed that she would be cared for by a nurse or be treated in a hospital. There was this one poster that said, Que haces tu para la victoria? What are you doing for victory? And I remember this one peasant girl. She would point to the poster and say, I scrub floors. Whatever they did, they felt it was for freedom and democracy. The Republic fought on, constantly starved for supplies, without help from the democracies, who in the name of a phony neutrality declared an embargo on any arms and support for Spain. But Franco had the unceasing support from Hitler and Mussolini. Approximately 35,000 volunteers from 52 countries joined the international volunteers and of them, between 5,000 to 6,000 were killed. Of the roughly 2,800 American volunteers who went to Spain, 800 were killed. In July 1938, the Republic was able to mount a large surprise attack on the fascist lines across the Ebro River. They reclaimed mile after mile of lost ground, but their rifles could not hold against the bombs of the Luftwaffe. In an effort to force Germany and Italy to withdraw their forces from Spain, the Spanish government disbanded the international brigades. German and Italian military aid to Franco only increased. The Republic tried to hold out until the world war they knew was coming began and the democracies would finally aid democratic Spain. They missed it by a few months. On November 1st, 1938, La Pasionaria addressed the international troops as they were about to leave Spain. For the first time in the history of the people's struggles, there was the spectacle, breathtaking in its grandeur, the formation of international brigades to help save a threatened country's freedom and independence. Communists, socialists, anarchists, republicans, men of different colors, differing ideology, antagonistic religions, yet all profoundly loving liberty and justice, they came and offered themselves to us unconditionally. Today, many are departing. Thousands remain shrouded in Spanish earth, profoundly remembered by all Spaniards. You can go proudly. You are history. You are legend. We shall not forget you. And when the olive tree of peace is in flower, entwined with the victory laurels of Republic of Spain, come back. Come back to our side, for here you will find a homeland. Those who have no country or friends, who must live deprived of friendship, all, all will have the affection and gratitude of the Spanish people who today and tomorrow will shout with enthusiasm, long live the heroes of the international brigades. Ruth David out. An American nurse in Spain was touring the United States in a battered ambulance, urging citizens to lift the devastating embargo that was strangling Spain. She was in Tampa for a rally on the last day of March, 1939, when Franco entered a vanquished Madrid. The church was full and people were standing outside in the street and they all wept because Spain was being defeated. And when Spain then actually fell, I cried my eyes out. I don't like to talk about it. It was a really terrific sorrow. Dorothy Parker, Spanish war correspondent, wrote in 1952. I went to Spain and I became a member of the human race. I met the best people anyone ever knew. I had never seen such people before, but I shall see their like again, and so shall all of us. If I did not believe that, I think I would stand up in front of my mirror and take a long, deep, swinging slash at my throat. For what they stood for, what they have given to others to take and hold and carry along, that does not vanish from the earth. This is not a matter of wishing or feeling, it is knowing. 
It is knowing that nothing devised by fat, rich, frightened men can ever stamp out truth and courage and determination for a decent life. Albert Camus. It was in Spain that men learned that one can be right and still be beaten, that force can vanquish spirit, that there are times when courage is not its own reward. Taste of ashes, wounded hearts, we leave our best in this bloodied earth. The enemy remains the same The war goes on, just the front has changed One day this war will be Defeat will be but history, their example, our legacy. One day the world will be at peace, and what might have been will one day be. One day The war over, 500,000 Spaniards fled Spain. The French put most of them in concentration camps along with those internationals who could not return to their countries. The brutal repression in Spain continued. Franco executed more than 100,000 people after he won the war. 35,000 died in labor camps. There are 30,000 bodies in a mass grave near Franco's monument to himself. Year after year, the veterans of the Lincoln Brigade never wavered in their support for the cause of justice and a democratic Spain. When the American veterans returned home, they formed the Veterans of the Abraham Lincoln Brigade organization to continue the fight against fascism worldwide and to support Spanish refugees and those in Franco's jails and the welfare of all those who fought in Spain. When they returned home from Spain, they were given a hero's welcome by their supporters but treated as traitors by the U.S. government. During the McCarthy period, they were labeled subversives and listed twice on the Attorney General's list, at the beginning for Abraham Brigade and at the end for Veterans of the Lincoln Brigade. They were blacklisted, called before the House Committee on Un-American Activities and hounded by the FBI. Yet, they continued to be on the front lines of every fight for social justice organizing labor unions, civil rights marches, opposing the war in Vietnam, U.S. intervention in Central America. They were chanting, no pasaran, no pasaran. Rosario Pistone, volunteer. They stopped me on street corners. 
They came up to me on buses. They went to all my employers. At least once a week for 15 years, the FBI came and threatened me. I tried to keep my cool during the whole period. It was hard. I told them, you want to talk about me? Fine. I'll talk about me, but I will not say anything about anybody else. They didn't want to know anything about me. They knew I was just an anti-fascist, that I went to Spain to fight the Italian fascists, the kind of Italians that made my father run away from his country. I did manage to get married, but it was relatively late when things were over, when I could risk going out and meeting people. But let me tell you, I would do everything over again. I would do exactly the same thing. Viva la quince brigada, rumba, rumba, rumba la. Viva la quince brigada, rumba, rumba, rumba la. Que sea cubierta de gloria. Ay, Manuela, ay, Manuela. Que sea cubierta de gloria. Ay, Manuela, ay, Manuela. No lo es nuestro deseo, rumba, rumba, rumba la. Solo es nuestro deseo, rumba. Yeah. 